So this thirst quencher of a hydro unit is back yet again for another rerun. Almost feels like yesterday since she joined my roster. Yilan is often considered to as the 5 star Xing Chou, and honestly, I can kind of agree with that. In this beginner friendly video, I will be detailing how you can build Yilan in terms of weapons, artifacts, gameplay, and teams. And by the end of this video, your Yilan will be able to quench your thirst in more ways than one. So I'm gonna be frank right off the bat. Yilan is an amazing unit. If you see my video where I talk about a good baseline roster of characters that anyone can benefit from, Yilan is not too far off the top. It's a unit that I would say if you can spare the primos to go for it, it is a good investment for the long term. That is, though, her rerun, if you're watching this in 4.0, might be a little inconvenient considering we're about to be bombarded by new Fontaine characters. And investing into an older unit might not be ideal if newer or better units are just about to be released. That being said, a common misconception about Yilan is that if you already have Xing Chou, you don't need Yilan. And my response is... Nah. Unlike Sucrose vs. Kazuha, where there's not too much demand for two Anemo units, there is a lot of demand for two Hydro units, especially single target. I've gotten so much mileage out of my Yilan that knowing I can allocate two much needed Hydro supports on two separate teams is just such a relief. In fact, something interesting is that some of Yilan's best teams feature both her and Qingqiu at the same time. In case you don't know what role Yilan serves, she is known as a Hydro support unit, focusing on single target. The reason why this role is very sought after is because it's the root for a lot of synergies. Her burst fires off Hydro missiles whenever the on-field character attacks. This is very useful as it allows her to carry value to another character and synchronize attacks to be more efficient. Pretty much every Pyro character before Dendro wanted one of these two to activate Vaporize. Now that Dendro exists, she can fit into Hyper Bloom teams too. While I still think Xing Cho should still get a slight edge in which one to prioritize first, especially if you happen to have him at C6, since in most cases he's the first one to slot into the team, Yilan gets the leftovers. I might do a video on Xing Cho, but he offers defense, resistance to knockback, and a little bit of healing, which are all things that Yilan doesn't have. But despite all that, she is praised as one of the best supports in the game, even though she's more or less a 5-star version of a 4-star character. So let's start with some gameplay. Yilan is a Hydro Bow user, and I'm not gonna bother with normal attacks, cause you're not gonna use them. The charge attack, however, does have a nuance. If Yilan has not been in combat for 5 seconds, her charge attack will be charged a lot quicker. Note that she doesn't even need to be off-field for this to work. As long as she's not attacking, this will work. There's a helpful indicator when Yilan's bracelet lights up, so you know this ability is ready again. The skill ability allows you to enter a different form where you sprint really fast and mark every enemy you come across. Releasing the button will exit the sprint and deal hydro damage to every enemy marked. You can also tap it instead, and it's more or less the same thing, but just with a really short sprint. Just some things to note, this skill ability actually has some uses while exploring as you can cover a lot of ground pretty quickly with it, so make sure to bring her into your daily resource runs. Another thing to note is that the damage scales off Yilan's max HP, as opposed to attack, but we can talk about that later. The burst will deal hydro damage in an AoE and create what is known as an exquisite throw, which I'll just simplify as the dice. The dice will fire off hydro attacks every time the on-field character uses a normal attack, very very similar to Ching Chou. Yilan does not need to be the one on field in order to fire the dice, making it universally useful in pretty much any character that wants the Hydro support. The burst also scales off max HP. Passives. A1 gives Yilan a boost to max HP for every unique element in the party. I don't really focus too much on this, usually I have around 3 elements in the team, that includes Yilan, so the bonus just happens to come naturally. It's not a huge damage boost, so don't feel forced to build a 4 element team. A4. As long as the dice is in play, your active character deals plus 1% damage. This increases by 3.5% every second, meaning that the damage boost is the greatest when Yilan's burst is just about to expire. I normally don't micromanage my playstyle around this, but it is something you can take advantage of. If you're playing Hu Tao, for example, you might want to save her burst just as the dice is about to expire to maximize the damage. I would say this is something you would do if you absolutely want to squeeze every ounce of damage from your Yilan, but personally I don't really bother with this. The weapons part is pretty easy. Do you have Aqua Simulacra or Elegy of the End? They are considered the best in slot for most cases. The most important stats you're looking for are Crit, 
energy recharge and HP percent. If you don't have either, then it becomes a classic case of just use Faf. The Favonius Warbow eases the ER requirements and provides additional energy to the whole team. A sacrificial bow at high refinements, such as 3 or up, can also work. And if you're still low level, you can never go wrong with the slingshot. Luckily, due to Yilan's HP skilling kit, a lot of your unused HP artifacts will finally be able to see some use. According to Kaching Main, the undisputed best in slot is the good old emblem of Sever Fate, 4 piece. Fortunately, in 4.0, this will be added to the artifact strongbox, so your days of avoiding the Shimanawa set are over. The emblem set gives ER and increases damage from burst from the unit's ER stat. If we're talking ER, a good range on Yelan is around the 200% mark. You'll find that it often varies depending on the team and the weapons you're running. Using Favonius will lower that requirement, hence why it's so good. If you absolutely want to maximize your damage, you can take a look at the chart and determine which team you want to put Yelan in. There's even some differentiation between if you have two charges of her skill or not. But I'm lazy, my build just uses the exact same setup since changing them is just such a pain. You want the classic 1 to 2 ratio for crit rate to crit damage. The closer you are to this balance, the more damage you will do on average. EM doesn't matter since Yelan is the one who supplies the initial element. HP percent will play a bigger role than you think, given that Yelan's kit scales off max HP. In fact, her kit scales off purely off HP, so attack stats are not useful unless you plan on using her normal attack. For the timepiece, energy recharge is the way to go, unless you already have enough ER from your substats. In that case, HP percent could work as well. For the goblet, hydro damage percent is optimal if you can find one. If not, HP percent can work too. For the circlet, getting that crit to the perfect 1 to 2 ratio should take priority, but once again, if you have enough crit from substats, HP percent can also work. Just a word of warning, you should not have more than one piece with HP% main stat, as that will weaken your Yelan more than other combinations. Let's review my own Yelan build. I will be judging my artifacts based on three levels, and also give a little insight how my substats contribute to the overall build. I am running the classic Fav Warbow. It's only at refinement 1, and in this clip I realized I had some spare, so let's put a refinement on it. Why not? For the flower, some very favorable stats going into both crit and HP. Now that's what I like to see. For the feather, I have some decent stats going into ER and crit damage. Once again, not bad at all. I'm running an ER timepiece. Definitely lucked out with this one quite a bit, though the EM is irrelevant, at least in the builds I'm going for. That HP percent is also a nice treat. And I was just kidding when I said I lucked out in the last piece, because the goblet is definitely where it's at. This is my offset piece, and this monstrous 40 CV hydro damage percent is really something else. Finally, a crit rate circlet to finish it off, but once we get to the overview section, this piece can probably be changed for something else. Still, I'll accept this piece as viable. Looking at my overall attributes, we can see that my setup is not exactly optimal. The 270% ER is a little overkill for what I'm going for. I can probably get away with hovering around 200. Given Yelan and likely another teammate is carrying fav weapons, or maybe even a bit lower than 200. I have an extremely unbalanced crit ratio, way off the mark from the 1 to 2. Ideally, if I were to make changes to this build, I would look for artifacts that contribute to a more balanced crit ratio, lower my ER, and maybe get a little bit more health total. Constellations. Where are they? Okay, if you really want to maximize Yelan's damage, or identify yourself as a super simp, the first two constellations are good to go for. The first adds another charge to her skill, making energy problems a lot more manageable. The second will increase damage from her burst, which is also quite nice. But the gacha rates in this game aren't exactly the best, so these improvements come at a very steep cost. When leveling talents, the majority of Yelan's output comes from her burst. I crown mine at level 10, and you can level the skill too, but it doesn't matter as much. You can leave the normal attack unleveled, as you're just not gonna need it. Also, don't feel pressured to commit to a level 10 burst, just as I have, as the resource costs are quite massive. A level 6 or 8 can also be good commitment levels to go for. When playing Yelan, you're most likely fitting her into the rotation for your team, and just like Xingqiu, she follows pretty much the same script, but there are actually two that I know of. For the headache-free version, use Yelan's E followed by Q. Simple. Mark all the enemies you can, activate the burst, and let the particles fall onto you. There's another version of this that requires a bit more mechanical planning, but can be used if you want to absolutely maximize damage. 
Once again, use Yelan's skill, but right after it ends, fire off a charge attack before activating her burst. Since the charge attack has reduced charge time, if you can time it just right, you can sneak one in before catching the particles to refund your burst again. Again, this is something you can do to maximize your damage, but if you don't want to bother with it, then don't feel forced to. I don't do it, just the classic EQ script is good enough for me. Teams. This is where Yelan shines. A major component of why she's considered one of the best supports is how universal her role is. I personally use her in my Hu Tao team, as well as a Raiden Hyperbloom team, that you guys probably see a lot in my videos. Just the value of being able to fit into multiple teams without changing your build is very appealing to me. Much like Xing Shou, you can combine Yelan with almost any pyro character. She's an amazing applicator for vape-based reactions as well as Hyperbloom and Dendro. I won't focus too much into this teams as Yelan plays a more support role, albeit a very important component of these teams. Not only that, her role can be very flexible, and I'm willing to bet that no matter what roster you have, she will find a spot to be slotted in. There's a reason why Xing Chou is considered one of the best units in the game. A 5-star version of that, while a lot more expensive, is still a good alternative, or even an addition alongside Xing Chou. That's just how good the role she plays is. Both characters play a vital part in supporting a lot of the most powerful and popular teams today. That getting Yulan is always going to be a net positive. Now, I know this argument comes up every now and then, but if you have Xing Chou already, do you still need Yulan? And the answer, at least in my opinion, yes. While the need for the Hydro support role can be lessened if you already have the 4-star Poet, having both of them can actually lead to even better team comps. And in the Spiral Abyss, it's just so nice knowing that you can fit them into separate portions to satisfy all your needs related to Hydro. I was dreading how to build my Abyss teams prior to getting my Yelan, thinking that, man, wouldn't it be so cool if I could run another Xing Chou? And now, I can. Luckily, I rolled Yelan during her last raid up and Xing Chou was on the banner as well. That's how I got my C6. In comparison, a C6 Xing Chou will outperform a C0 Yelan, but not everyone has a C6 Xing Chou. And even then, Yelan is still regarded as a premier support option. Overall, I will give Yelan a 4 out of 5 rating. While her rarity puts her a little bit below Xing Chou when considering accessibility, her universal support roles can fit seamlessly into so many teams, enabling you to play in more ways with less resource investment. I think any player can benefit from having Yulan in their roster, regardless of how new you are to the game. Assuming you can spare the primos, of course. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this beginner-friendly Yulan guide. I have an interesting twist on the Zhang Li guide that's coming out in the coming weeks. Stay tuned, enjoy the new region, and always remember, have fun with the game.